presented by Church Tech U. It's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, what's new in ProPresenter 7.4? Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. One thing that I've been really impressed with is how since they changed their business model, and I know there's been a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth about it, Renewed Vision has released a lot of new stuff in ProPresenter 7. Back about a year ago, they released just the original version, ProPresenter 7. Now, if they followed the script that they used with ProPresenter 6, they might have introduced a couple of minor improvements. But that's not what they did at all. In fact, they've introduced four major improvements just in that year. Maybe more, because we're not quite to the year uh, anniversary just yet. So, what is in the latest one? Well, let's talk exactly about what the new features are, and in a future tutorial, I'll show you how to use each of them. So first off, there's a new logo or icon for ProPresenter. Not a big deal, just something new. And sometimes just little tweaks help make software better. So this is something that you will notice if you update to 7.4. Is Now it's an orange icon. It doesn't say Pro anymore. It's just got the symbol. But that's new. Next, if... English isn't your native tongue. If you're using a computer that's set to Spanish or German or French or several other uh, new languages, well, the languages aren't new, but they're new to ProPresenter, then you'll see that the UI is updated to be in that native language. And that's something that's pretty cool. Next, Big Sur and M1 support. So, Apple released a new version of their operating system, as they do every fall, and now ProPresenter 7 supports it. But Apple also changed architectures completely. It's more similar to the ARM architecture that they use for their iPhones, etc. And now that's supported in ProPresenter as well. And from what I'm hearing, ProPresenter sings on it. There are a couple of limitations that are uh, not a result of something Renewed Vision is doing, something as a result of another piece of software. But once that gets up, uh, the M1, and these are the cheapest low-end entry-level M1 Apple Silicon Macs, are going to be blazing fast and just as capable as they were on the Intel side or Windows and the AMD side. So that's something that's really impressive. Next we have looping background retriggering. Now this takes just a second to explain. It used to be that if you had a background, a background video um, triggered by a slide from the media layer, if you clicked on that again, the background would start all over again. No longer the case. If you have it all set up correctly, if you click on, let's say you've got your background on the first slide of verse 1, as soon as you click on the first slide of verse 1 again, the background just keeps going. It doesn't re-trigger. So that's something else that they've added in 7.4. Next, content fill line width. Now, you might be curious what that is. Well, it's actually right here on this slide. See how cleverly I did that? So, this width can be set to match the width of the word. So, this black bar behind this is only as wide as the word width. Before we go back to the previous thing, you'll notice that it goes all the way across, even where... For example, looping up here is shorter than these two down here. It went all the way across. So there are three settings. This one, 
which makes it just as wide as whatever line it's on, one where it makes it as wide as the longest line, and one that's just normal like it was before. So that's something that's pretty cool. Next, stage display objects. Stage displays, stage screens in ProPresenter 7 are remarkably more powerful than they were in ProPresenter 6. Because you can layer things on top of one another, it's almost like you get another layer when you're using um, the stage screens, if you want to use them that way. Well, they've upped their game even more and made it to where you can tell what slide you're on, how many more slides are left, um, whether you're on verse 1, verse 3, course 1, vamp, you know, wherever. You can tell all that on the stage screen if you want to, but you don't have to. So you have a lot more options now than you had before. Next, edit Bible text from an inactive computer. Now this takes a little explanation. Uh, it used to be the case that you had two choices. You could have the Bible, uh, they you registered to your registered computer, and that's where you had to do all your editing on a registered computer, one that was set for uh, displaying elsewhere, which is fine if you had a site license because you just register that one and not think twice about it. But if you had just a single seat license, then you got into trouble because if you wanted to edit the scripture passage from the NLT, for example, at home on a machine that you're never going to present with, you're just editing with, you were out of luck. Well, they've added a little um, kind of a toggle switch now so that you can say, hey, this is part of this same account, but I'm not actually presenting with it. So with that, you can edit Bible text. And of course, I don't mean like, you know, remove stuff. I mean like, you know, make it bold or reformat or whatever you need to do to use the built-in Bibles. So that's something that has been really, really a big thing that they added in um, ProPresenter 7.4. So that's all the new features, at least as far as I could find, in ProPresenter 7.4. And in subsequent tutorials, I'm going to go through each of these in turn so that you can see how to use them. I mean, I won't touch too much on the languages or the M1 Big Sur support, those things. But the other ones I'm going to touch on so that you can see just how you go about doing the new things that you can now do in ProPresenter 7.4. If you like this content, let me tell you, I have released a new course. It's called the ProPresenter 7 Quick Start Course, and I'm getting all sorts of raving reviews from people that said, I didn't understand ProPresenter before, but now I do. And that's why I made it, to make it so that if you don't understand ProPresenter, you can get a quick start and get uh, your feet up under you and then go into more advanced content. So if that's something that sounds good to you, go to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick and just put in your name and email address and I'll create a login for you for that free course. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.